Rita, that you can call me Hossein, and I can be here to try and give this previous um, very, sounds like a bit old fashioned name in Thai, but I really oh, like this name. <laughs> <laughs> and I would like to thank you to the Hassan Sutitra, the director of the Institute of Thai Studies, as well as the duties of the institution to organize this brilliant seminar and giving me the opportunity to talk on the seminar. And I think it's better to um, introduce myself a little bit. Um, I believe I need to add something more. Um, I'm doing actually, I'm carrying my PhD dissertation did much since this March in mainly in Bangkok <laughs> and belonging to that institution. And my main uh, interest thing is about the body image and especially how body image is related to the learning process of dancing. For example, in classic ballet and what's asked in, the, in classic times as well. But um, preceding my field of research here, I came to a cross very um, sort of unique phenomena um, because the including dances, um, especially Thai dances, always talk about certification. Um, as you may know, and there is some certification in ballet as well. But only one kind of certification is very, very outstanding in this country. So I just came up with this topic to um, develop more with the audience today. So I would like to start. Um, the purpose of this um, lecture is to describe the cultural practice of practicing ballet in Thailand because I don't think many people know that um, actually Thai people um, exercise practicing ballet. And the second, I will examine how the Russian certification system strongly related to the practice of practicing ballet in Thailand. And this is basically about the <coughs> certification, but only one certification in ballet. And let me introduce the topic of dance. Um, dance as a sub subject of anthropology had never been made in subject in anthropology before the 1960s. Of course, there are some descriptions of dance appeared in some ethnographies, but they were still very, very peripheral and exposition in ethnographies. From 1960s to 1970s, there were gradually increasing ethnographic accounts on so-called dance emerged affected by a revaluation of arts in anthropology. However, in Thai studies, many scholars in different disciplines, such as anthropology, ethnodanceology, history, have studied dance. But the thing is, most of them have treated only so-called traditional finance, such as Nagasin, Lacan, and they are based on sort of functional analysis or symbolic analysis of dances. But if you look at the society, nowadays in Thailand, of course, more and more people have started to learn dances, other than traditional dances, such as contemporary dance, jazz dance and classic ballet. So we need to also research about this sort of quite few kinds of dances in Thailand. Then um, I think I need to define what is classic ballet first. Classic ballet was sort of created dance in 17th century, actually in France by French dancer Pierre Bouchon. Ocean was a dance teacher of the 14th, and he actually determined basic five positions in classic ballet. So, I would say classic ballet is defined to keep strictly and be subject to the five basic positions in its posture. Then, etymology of ballet. We are very familiar with the English word ballet, but it originated in Latin, ballo, meaning literally dance. And it came into Italian, balletto. 
but let's come into French a letter. Then we have English ballet. But in Thai language, ballet is pronounced by Thai dancers as ballet and spelled, sorry about my bad pronunciation, and spelled like this. And however, classic ballet is ballet classic. But people seldom use this word. They just use only ballet. <clears throat> then I have to point out there is a mystery of ballet history in Thailand. But it is very difficult to identify who was the first ballet dancer or the first ballet teacher in Thailand. So we start to wonder when the history of ballet in Thailand started. But it's really hard to identify. But let me try. And that's because of one first lack of historical documents, including time and English. And second, people's know the situation of ballet in Thailand in older times are getting older and some of the important persons have already passed away, unfortunately. So, um, as a methodology, we have to resort to interviews with dancers or the former dancers. Then, there's a clue to the history of ballet in Thailand. I interviewed with a French-American lady. She was actually 89 years old, French-American ballet teacher. She came to Thailand 59 years ago, in 1954, when she got married with an American gentleman and that she started to teach classic ballet in Bangkok at the studio and it was invited by the Her Majesty the Queen to the Royal School to teach her children classic ballet. She was actually the only one ballet teacher at that time at the Royal Ballet School. Sorry, Royal School. But there was a ballet studio already existed at that time in Bangkok. So, I could say classic ballet would be introduced into Thailand at least before 1954. But I didn't have any valid historical documents to prove before 1954, so I, I can't identify exactly when. But I could say it's before 1954. Then, <clears throat> Even though there have been some ballet schools and studios existed in Bangkok and in other many places in Thailand, actually not until 1996, no professional ballet company existed in Thailand. I would like to call it Q Ballet Company, and this is only one professional ballet company in Thailand. Key Ballet Company and was actually established in the center of Bangkok in 1996 by a Japanese female ballet dancer. And at the ballet company, normally 20 to 32 dancers come to the company classes in the morning during the performance season in 2013. But the number of the professional dancers will change according to the production and because some of them are not and regular dances, they audition for the every season for new members. And age is apparently from 17 to 43 years old. And male around 12. And the female is around 20. And I would like to show the daily exercise at the ballet company. Uh, the company members are required to come to take the company class, which only the company members are allowed to take. They have an obligation to train themselves, and not every day, actually, three days a week. But in many countries at the professional ballet company, they train five days a week. 
So compared to the world standard, I think this is quite worse. Then the company class um, consists of two parts mainly, total and 90 minutes. The first part is called bar lesson, and which is basically the exercise with the bar. But the exercise follows a sort of a structure. And the second part is called center lesson. And this is an exercise in the center with that bar. And and the teachers can put more creative steps in the center lesson compared to bar lesson. And I, I would like to show the some photos about the bar lesson.
Persian ballet in Thailand. There are several ballet schools or studios, especially in the Skumbit area in Bangkok. There are quite a number of ballet schools and studios in this area. Right, um, nowadays, the classical ballet has been popular as a lesson for children and women. Basically, for female lesson, I think. Not very much um, male people go to run ballets, but there is some, quite few. And RAD is regarded as the most important method of ballet in Thailand. But actually, in terms of the method, there are other world famous methods in ballet, such as the Tea method and the Vaganova method, and so on. But only our lady is regarded important in this country. And I would like to define method as syllabus plus examinations with certification. So this is a sort of an evaluation system. Then, what is our lady? And our lady is actually a name of an organization. The Royal Academy of Dance already stands for Royal Academy of Dance, and this is one of the world's most influential dance education and training organizations. And RAD was founded in 1920 to reinvigorate dance teaching within the UK. However, over time, it has expanded its influence and activities internationally, counting currently more than 1,000 students in full time for part-time teacher training programs as well. With their examination syllabus being taught to more than a quarter of a million students worldwide, we help and encourage our teachers to both perfect their teaching skills and pass on this knowledge to the students. This is an explanation of the RAT from its website. And the secondary RAT is its certification system on ballet. And the second one is more important in Thailand. And this is consists of syllabus and examinations based on that syllabus. So basically Thai people mean its certification system, the second one on ballet by our AT. Then, our AD in Thailand. Royal Academy of Dance, Thailand, its office is actually now located in Chiang Mai, but it used to be in Bangkok. But almost all the ballet schools and studios have introduced our AT in their classes to make students obtain our AD certificate. Our AD certificate is regarded as the best effective criterion regarding ballet in Thailand. For example, one of my informants and dancer, Tia, a female dancer, said, when I was looking for a job of teaching ballet, I was rejected just because I didn't have any Our AD certificate. And I would like to show the um, rebels of the exams in RAT. They have 15 different rebels for our examinations. And for each grade, they will give the medals. And this is the one example of their syllabus for the students. And this is the intermediate level. Basically, for the exam, the student has to buy the syllabus with DVD and study how to move based on the syllabus for the examination. And this is the example of the medals. 
of the examination. Basically, there are three kinds of medals for each grade. Bronze, bronze, silver, gold. And this is one example of the certificate. So why is our LG popular in Thailand? I think it's because of the history of classic ballet in Thailand. It has something to do with the history in this country. Even though it's hard to identify the <coughs> exact history of ballet in Thailand, um, I came across one old ballet teacher. She is 65 years old, Thai female ballet teacher. And she's one of the first Thai female dancers who went to the Royal Ballet School in the UK from Thailand in the middle of the 1960s. And she actually learned RLD in London and introduced RLD into Thailand after she came back to Thailand in the late 1960s. And then she opened her own ballet school. And afterwards, RLD became the major method ballet in Thailand because at that time there was no systematic methodology didn't exist in Thailand to teach ballet. So it's our idea for teaching and also one of my informants, a female ballet dancer, Lex told me in my interview, I want to take a lot of workshops of our AT method and Bagano method before. But they were not useful for me to dance myself at all. So if you remember the statement of the tear, both tear and leg statements implied RAD would be useful or meaningful when they teach body. And I would like to summarize below. RAD can be meaningful for teaching but not for dancing themselves. RPG can be important in the sense that it is already accepted as a major so social evaluation system of ballet in Thailand, in spite of the fact that it is not useful for dancers to dance. Through the description of ballet practice, we can start to think that to what extent there is a prevalence of certification in Thai culture, in other fields, not only in dance, but also in other sort of areas. Thank you for your attention.